Hi oh, YouTubers, uh, just a quick video log of uh, our jet boat and jet spring in general. Um, when I first tried to get into the sport of uh, jet sprinting, I trolled the YouTube for a lot of info and the net for a lot of info and uh, you know there wasn't a lot of uh, guys out there explaining how, it, how it's all done and how they got the boat set up so I thought I'd go through a quick intro into the sport and how we've got our boat set up. Um, uh, bearing in mind that I'm no mechanical genius, uh, realistically I'm only a beginner in the sport. Um, there's a thousand different ways to set your boat up. Uh, this is just, just how we've got ours. Uh, by all means, if you've got any comments at the end, let us know what you think or, or if there's anything we could be doing better that you know about. Uh, or if you've got any questions about the sport. Because uh, when I first tried to get into it, like I said, I trolled the, trolled the internet and uh, I thought this would be a good video to throw up for people who are interested in it. Um, as far as jet sprinting goes, you know, it's it's one of the cheapest auto sports to get into initially. Um, down here in South East Queensland and Australia, where I am in particular, we run, we run uh, monthly club rounds during the race season, uh, which generally runs uh, from about March till October. So anyway, onto the boat. Um, as far as our hull goes, we're running a Matcraft. It's an aluminium hull. Uh, most of the high-end competitive boats are all aluminium these days. Uh, you can get different boats uh, as far as you can get an aluminium hull and a fiberglass, the fiberglass top or, or fiberglass boats. Uh, but generally, most of the guys who run a competitive series run, uh, run all aluminium. Uh, I guess it's lighter, stronger and easier to repair when things go sideways. Um, as far as the trailer goes, they're pretty standard, usually dual or, or single axle trailers. We do run fire extinguishers up the front for our, uh, when we race, uh, in case there is any fires on the ramps. Um, so there is a fire extinguisher close at hand. So into the uh, front of the boat, we're running a couple of missile switches. Uh, we've got one for our magneto. Uh, on this motor, we're running a Mallory Sprint Mag 3, I think it is, uh, ignition. Uh, we've also got a missile switch for the ignition, which controls the general DC power in the front end, uh, as well as a start button, uh, bilge pump switch, uh, an indicator lights and whatnot. As far as the gauges go, we're running a taco, taco uh, oil pressure, water temperature, fuel pressure, and oxygen sensor, which is a fuel air ratio from the exhausts. Um, we're also running a data logging system as well, uh, which you can see by the tablet up the front. Next to our TAPCO, we're also running an oil pressure light, um, which we can see quite easily. So if, if the oil pressure drops below a certain point when we're running in a race, uh, we see that light come on and we know to shut the engine down as quick as possible to save any damage that might be caused from low oil pressure. Um, on all our gauges too, we, uh, we run fuses. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but under the dash, we have a fuse box set up. Um, it's just basic fuses that, uh, we put fuses on every, everything. That way, when there is an electrical problem, uh, if something does blow, we can isolate it right down to the particular item that's causing the problem and under here as well as our data logger which is the brains of the operation for the tablet that you see above. So as mentioned we're running a data logging system in this boat uh, whereby we have uh, a few sensors set up on the engine. It feeds us back information which is recorded uh, onto a logging device. Uh, information like air to fuel ratios, air intake temperatures, RPM, oil pressure, oil temperature, coolant, uh, battery voltages, also lap times, um, also feeds us back uh, a lot of dynamics about the boat, about your and roll, um, acceleration and latitudes and longitudes of GPS so it's, it can show us what the boat's doing on the track at any given time uh, which we can log uh, when we're out of the water on the race day and have a look and see what the boat's doing uh, when we're actually performing which is um, a really handy feature. Uh, a lot of this stuff, the gauges um, especially the data log is not required especially when you're initially starting out it's just a nice feature to have uh, I know of guys even who run in the top end boats who have a system as simple as a taco and an oil pressure warning light 
um, like I said, it's just a nice feature to have. Uh, and it gives us a bit more information about how the boat's actually going and when we are racing. Uh, also on the front is two seats. There's uh, always a driver and a navigator in the front end. Um, we run FIA approved seats. Uh, these seats are looking pretty daggy at the minute. They're getting changed out at the end of this season. Uh, put in some, some better ones um, as well as modifying the roll cage which you also have. We have head restraints on ours. Um, they help contain your helmet when, you, when you're bashing around going from side to side. We also wear uh, what they call a harness device which is a neck restraint uh, which also helps your neck from snapping forward if you do so hit something hard in the front end. Um, as well as the five point harnesses, they're approved racing harnesses. Uh, they're a certain latch type which um, help hold you in the boat so you don't go flying out when you hit something hard. Um, they're mandatory, they change that every two years as well to maintain their integrity. Uh, as well as the harnesses, uh, we have to wear approved racing gear, which includes your helmet, uh, fire suits. Uh, we, in particular, use a three-layer fire suit, um, gloves, socks, uh, approved balaclavas, uh, open-face helmets. We always wear open face uh, in the event that if you do roll over and you're trapped underwater, if they need to get you some sort of respirator, uh, while you're trapped underwater, they can get to your mouth basically, is my understanding of it. But um, yeah, we always wear open face. Uh, as well as the roll cage you see here, um, they're mandatory as well. You have to have them made out of chrome ollie. In the rear, uh, the engine. In this boat, we're in a Group A 400 class, so we're running a Dart 400 cubic inch small block Chevy. Uh, it's, it's been dying out at about 600 plus horsepower you know which is a fair bit when you first get into the sport but um like i said there's a there's a sportsman's class where they're running 350s and uh you really don't have to be running such a high performance engine to get into the sport um, we were just lucky enough to come this, across this boat at the right time for the right price so uh yeah we managed to get into it um as well as on the engine we're running pro lightning heads it's got all the go fast bits to get it to crank to that 600 plus horsepower 950 holly. Um, you'll notice on the on the holly, I'm running a throttle restrictor. That's purely just for me because I'm only uh, just sort of starting out. You know, helps uh, restrict me from rolling the boat over and from going too quick and quick and hit the bank. Um, you don't have to have that. That's just something I've integrated. Uh, as well as in the engine, we're running uh, a baffled sump uh, because you're sloshing from side to side. You can imagine the oil in the bottom of the sump sloshes around. Um, so we have baffles built into that uh, to help stop that happening. You'll notice on the front of the block we're also running a catch can from the rocker covers for our breather. Um, so it goes up to the catch can and then comes back down to a breather down the bottom here. The reason for it snaking and going through the catch can like that is uh, purely for safety. So uh, if we do have a rollover the oil's contained and doesn't go back and hit the exhaust. Um, some of the teams that I might in the future, sometimes they run their oil breathers from their rocket covers straight into the exhaust. Um, this way any uh, any oil deposits do get um, thrown into the exhaust, get burnt off and thrown backwards. Uh, and if you do roll over, um, the exhaust contains contains the fumes and whatnot. So that's, that's another way the guys can do it sometimes. Uh, our fuel tank, we run uh, aviation gas in this thing, uh, higher octane fuel. Uh, you don't have to, uh, it's just something this engine's set up for to help it go fast. Um, our fuel tank is a stainless tank which is under the seat. Um, and you'll notice there on the top with the blue hose coming in of it, uh, that's our breather for our uh, fuel tank. And it actually has a one-way rollover valve, so if, if the boat does roll over, that valve closes it off so it can't spurt out. And we also have the uh, the fuel breather run to the back end of the boat. That way, if it, if it does ever overflow, um, it's not near the drivers. So uh, it helps contain the fire a little bit away from the drivers if that does happen. Uh, a fuel filler is on the other side. You'll notice it's a metal, metal cap. 
um, and it's also recessed. Uh, that's so uh, when we're racing we do roll over. We've mounted ours behind the roll cage in, in the case of a rollover the cat won't break off and uh, spurt the drivers with the fuel. Powering the boat, we're running a high-end Odyssey battery. We've also integrated a uh, battery isolator um, so it can be for ease of use basically so we can isolate the battery quickly in the case of a rollover and, and also just for general maintenance on the boat we can shut it down quite quickly which is good handy feature to have um, as well as near the battery too you'll see uh, water intake for the engine uh, the water intake is actually performed from the pressure back pressure from the jet engine pushes the water through to the block um, and then out uh, to an outlet in the side of the boat which is uh, just in here if I can show you just there on the other side we also have coming out the opposite side on the same output uh, we're running a tap so you can regulate water control to regulate how um, how hot the engine can get and how quick the coolant runs through it which um, you know helps on a hot or cold day you can regulate it if you need be so running from the engine we have a tail shaft uh, which drives the jet unit um, in our case the, the tail shaft is covered by uh, this alloy bracket I've made up helps stop water from being splashed around in the back uh, so basically engines direct drive to the to the jet jet unit so we're running a Scott jet uh, it's an eight and a quarter two-stage Scott jet it drives the boat um, the water basically comes up through the grill. I don't know if I can show the grill, see if I can get a shot of that. Hopefully, you can see that the water gets sucked up through the grill, through the jet unit, and then spurts out the back through this nozzle. Uh, the nozzle here, that's what drives you. That's all the play you got in it. You'd be amazed how quick that turns the boat. Um, also, the nozzle has different size shims which you can put in it to increase or decrease your diameter size for your output. And this can be adjusted as well with the screws um, up or down. As well as your shims on your jet, helping you control how your boat's trimmed. One of the biggest and most important things they run on the boats is uh, these fins on the back. We have uh, two. They're roughly run at... Um, about 40 mil long, about 25 to 30 mil deep. Uh, there's also one up in the center. I'm not sure if you can see that. So there's one in the center and two at the rear. Uh, these can be adjusted. These ones are looking a bit daggy. They're gonna have to be changed out soon. Um, but they're pre a pretty integral part of uh, how the boat controls in the corners. And that's about it, guys, for the walkthrough of our boat. Uh, if you'd like to check out all the Australian rules and regulations for the Aussie boats, you can Google afjsa.com. Uh, that's the Australian Formula Jet Sprint Association. Check out their website. They've got all the rules and regs there for the, each different class of boat. Um, there's also a boat sales section on there called the Boat Shed, which constantly gets updated. There's all, all, always different boats going on at any given time. Uh, at the moment, there's a cracker of a boat on there. It's reasonably cheap for around 20k. Uh, it's called Obsession, up for sale by Brett Thornton. It's, it's a prize winning package for its class, uh, I think it's about 20 grand, it's a, a walk in and race package, so check it out. Um, I'm filming in South East Queensland, Australia, so if you'd like to get involved, uh, and we'll check out our sport, we hold monthly club rounds down at Cabarita during the race season, which generally runs from March to October. Uh, everyone's friendly and likes to answer questions and help out the newbies, so um, get on down and check us out. Cheers. Thanks for watching.